this town. I can't peer into a crystal ball, but I can say this, that um, this government, and I believe uh, any government, would enforce uh, existing law, uh, would uh, carry legislation through, and that the pirate radio ships have no future at all. I'm quite con convinced of that. And I think the sooner they're convinced of it, the better. And I'm the victim. We are not criminals under any circumstances. They are, in fact, pirates. The, the word is a correct one. Uh, they are pirates. They are, in fact, outlaws. And uh, no society can, in fact, permit the continued existence of a group of lawbreakers, because if they do, then the law itself ultimately comes into disrepute. You know, yeah. Part of the pirates' attraction was their spontaneity and vitality, which was a novelty at the time. Capital's Tommy Vance was a disc jockey on both Caroline and Big L in the heyday of the pirates. Oh, very frequently things went wrong. Um, in fact, uh, I think some of the major politicians at that time considered the whole thing to be a total disaster anyway, though I've never concurred with what they thought. Um, things like, I mean, people never arrived in the newsroom on time, ever, so you go, now over to so-and-so with the news. Oh, well, he's not there, don't worry, let's play another record. There was that sort of attitude about it. Um, disasters galore. Please we go and Caroline temperature check, and I think we'll possibly have time for about one, possibly two more this morning on the Mike A show. We can see now that the pirates had a tremendous effect on the whole music industry. effect of Caroline on the whole rock music thing of the 60s was like so enormous. I mean, I even had uh, people like George Harrison and John Lennon say to me at various times, you know, that, that the input was just enormous, the impact of that. And it sort of suddenly made England a music, you know, suddenly was musically conscious on a pop level. Caroline sure shot. It's hard to overestimate the effect of the enormous increase in exposure the pirates offered to the music world. New smaller record companies got a chance to get their products heard, and many new bands, like the Moody Blues, for example, owed much of their success to the pirates. And the opportunities for advertising made the pirates popular with the non-music world, too. It was a leg in at a very cheap price for the small man, the small shopkeeper, the small guy, to get it, to get going, to get his business on the road. Couldn't buy television then because it was a thousand pounds a second or whatever, but he could buy Caroline. And, and, and all of that, you know, on that level was terrific as well. I mean. Advertise on Radio Caroline and make 1965 your boom year. Sell on Radio Caroline. And as for the pirate chiefs themselves, they weren't exactly short of a bob or two. Well, it was just enormous. I mean, it was just ridiculous. It was, you know, it was, you know, there was just so much revenue that, uh, you know, coming, you know, to, to. For three years, the skull and crossbones ruled the airwaves, filling the pirates' chests with gold and introducing to Britain the delights of all-day pop and giving a start to many of our best-known DJs. Caroline boasted Tony Blackburn, Simon D, Dave Lee Travis, Emperor Roscoe, Roger Scott, Tommy Vance and Johnny Walker. Blackburn and Vance also worked for Big L, Radio London, as did Dave Cash, Kenny Everett, Les Stewart and John Peel. Then, on the 15th of August, 1967... The government introduced the Marine Offences Act, a piece of legislation designed to make it impossible for the pirates to continue. The two principal arguments for the 1967 Act were that unregulated broadcasting might interfere with emergency services such as distress signals and that anyway the 1948 Copenhagen Plan, which had allocated all the European broadcasting frequencies, left no room for any further British radio channels. In fact, for these two reasons, many European governments, including Britain, had signed the Strasbourg Agreement in 1965. This meant we were on a bound to introduce legislation to protect European government authorised stations from interference by unauthorised stations. 
However, advances in broadcasting technology would probably have made it possible to allocate frequencies to the pirates. After all, since 1967, we've managed to find room under international law to fit in 20 local BBC stations and 19 independent commercial ones like Capital and LBC. The most serious charge was the possibility of interference with emergency services. Although there doesn't seem to be any evidence that this ever happened, the worry that it might one day was obviously a powerful influence on the decision to bring in the act. But was there another more emotional reason for sinking the pirates? Sir John Foster, former MP and expert on international law, thinks so. Where I think uh, the whole basis is wrong is that the British government's Labour and Conservative had an insane hatred of commercial radio. Insane. And so they allowed literally tens of millions of pounds, perhaps hundreds of millions of pounds from the start, from, 90, from before the war, to go to Radio Luxembourg, uh, paid by English advertisers, when they could have set a poll up in London, called it Radio Ruritania Utopia, and if somebody didn't like commercial radio, they could have listened to the BBC. Because I think that's the end of the argument. If you don't like it, you listen to something else. And, of course, starting from this insane hatred, that's why they passed the uh, Marine Offences, etc. Act of 1967. This is a Caroline Gale warning. And so they all closed except one. As the hour of midnight on the 14th of August approached, millions of listeners tuned in anxiously to see what would happen to the newly renamed Radio Caroline International's intention to continue despite the act. This has been Caroline Newsbeat. This is Radio Caroline. It is now 12 midnight. into the new phase of broadcasting from Caroline, I want you to remember something. That is, a station that belongs to you and is right cannot ever be taken away from you. And almost a decade later, she's still there. In part two, we'll be taking a closer look at the act and how Caroline managed to continue where the others have folded. Also, with a bit of luck, we should have reached the Mi Amigo by then and we'll be able to see what she looks like and maybe have a chat with some of the people on board. I'll see you then. <laughs> Please, bye, bye. Hey, sing along, kid. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1.